Hey guys, this is Dave with Gazadio. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at the FIO FT3 headphones. Yes, FIO is now jumping into the headphone arena. And if you watched my most recent review, you'll know that FIO has also recently introduced their new desktop speaker system, the SP3, which I'm not 100% positive that that is their first ever speaker, but I do know it's the first speaker they've produced in a very long time. So it appears that FIO is kind of diversifying, which is great because firstly, I love trying new things. And secondly, I think FIO has more than established themselves as a serious audio company and is proving, I think, that they deserve a spot in this arena. So we're gonna take a closer look at the FT3 and try and determine how serious of an entry into the full-size headphone market the FT3 is. But before we do, let's go ahead and take a look at what's included in the box with the FT3. So first, we have the headphones themselves. They also include a cable manufactured by Furukawa with interchangeable terminations, including a 3.5 single-ended, 4.4, and a 4.4 XLR. They also include a 6.35 adapter and a velvet carrying bag. It also comes with some artificial suede pads, and of course, they also include an extra pair of protein leather pads as well. And then finally, we have a very nice looking hard shell case and they also include a little organizer slash holder for the extra interchangeable cable terminations. So all in all, I think it's a very well-rounded package for the 319 price point. Now, as for price, specifications, and design, the FT3 comes in at $319 and has an open back design. They do have a fairly high impedance of 350 ohms. However, they also have a sensitivity of 105 dB. So while they will definitely benefit from more power, they don't necessarily need a lot of power to drive them at higher volumes. It uses a fairly large 60 millimeter dynamic driver with a beryllium plated gasket and DLC or diamond like carbon diaphragm. The cups or housings are made from aluminum as is the rest of the main body or structure of the headphones. So they, they feel strong, well built and are also fairly lightweight. They're also quite comfortable and the housings have a three axis swiveling design. Of course, the headband is adjustable as well. And it appears they also maybe added some elastic or some kind of stretchy material under the headband itself, which makes it just a little more pliable and again, resulting in an overall fairly comfortable fit. And then going back to the cable, the cable itself is three meters or 10 feet long, which can be a good thing if you're not very close to your equipment. But if you are close, then that just means you may be dealing with trying to manage some of the extra cable length. As for the overall cable quality, it's actually quite nice at this price. And it's made using 22 gauge high purity Furukawa mono crystalline copper. And again, it has a 3.5, 4.4 and XLR interchangeable terminations and a 6.35 adapter. So you can use them with most all of your devices. As far as the design itself, it's kind of cool, I guess. It kind of reminds me more of a gaming style headphone, which I'm sure no doubt will appeal to a wider or younger market. But for me personally, I tend to be drawn towards a simpler design that maybe includes a little wood or even just a little more variety in use of materials like the Sivka SV023s. But they are still cool. And again, I think they will have a fairly wide appeal to most consumers.
Now, before we jump in, I just quickly want to talk about amp pairing, because although the FT3 is a very sensitive headphone, I did find that it does benefit from giving them a little extra power. And I definitely noticed an increase in dynamics and just overall sound quality when using the XLR balanced output of my Topping L70, which gave me about one watt of power output with a 350 ohm load, which is plenty. So again, while I was still able to achieve good volume levels and overall good sound quality with many of my other lower power output devices, I did notice improvements and increased detail and bass dynamics when I fed them a little more power. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump into the sound. So the FT3s come with two different sets of pads, the artificial suede pads and then the protein leather pads, which I have on right now. And they both affect the sound signature fairly significantly, which means you kind of have a couple of different sound signatures to choose from. And most of the change occurs in the mid bass frequencies with the suede pads giving you the most warmth or mid bass presence of the two. Now it does seem like the suede pads affect all of the bass frequencies. So mid bass, but also bass and sub bass frequencies as well. But again, it's most noticeable in the mid bass. And the leather sounds a little more neutral or linear and has less bass presence than the suede pads. And as you may already know, open back headphones can generally struggle with reproducing bass and sub bass frequencies. But Fio seems to have put some major effort in to trying to remedy that issue. But the question I guess is, did it work? And I'll talk about that, but first let's just take a step back and talk about the sound signature of the FT3. So to my ears, the overall sound presentation with the suede pads is neutral with some warmth and some added bass. But with the protein leather pads, it's even more neutral and again, minus that warmth because of those tamed mid bass frequencies and bass frequencies. But as you move out of the bass into the mids, the two signatures start to converge and begin to start looking basically identical. And that carries all the way through the rest of the frequency spectrum. So there aren't really any notable sound differences between the pads once you move out of the bass frequencies. But just to break things down a little further, starting with the bass. So we know the difference in the bass quantity with the two different pads. But again, there are still those challenges we talked about with the bass extension when it comes to open back designs. So the question is, again, was Fio able to remedy that issue with this driver and housing design? And the answer is yes, absolutely. The FT3 has excellent bass extension all the way down into the sub bass frequencies, which means good low end support and great sub bass rumble. However, what does seem to be lacking slightly is dynamics impact and just the overall bass quality, in my opinion. That being said, it's still probably about on par with most of the other headphones in this price range. So that visceral physical sensation just didn't quite have the intensity that I had hoped for. And in terms of mid bass texture and clarity, while it is lacking a little, it is again probably about the same as most of the other headphones around this price. So it's not a deal breaker in any way. Now, as far as the mid range presentation, it's definitely not what I would consider to be overly forward at all. It's actually just right about where I like it. So vocals, and instruments aren't too far forward, nor are they too far away. And also bear in mind that the suede pads will give you a little extra warmth in the mid bass and lower mids, which gives some instruments and male vocals a little more body. As for mid range resolution, it's good for its price, but it's not as good as my Sivga SV-023s. And the SV-023s also present instruments and vocals just a little more naturally in my opinion as well. But like the bass, I would say the overall mid-range quality is about average for this price. And then moving into the treble. Now, this is probably my favorite aspect of the FT3. And the reason is the treble detail because it's very, very good at this price. And while it's not necessarily quite to the levels of my SV-023s, it does come pretty close. I would say about 90%. So my only nitpick is the treble timbre seems to be just a little unnatural with cymbal sometimes, just a little. And as for technicalities, I would say the FT3 ranges from average to very good for its price, the average being soundstage and the very good being image and separation. So the soundstage isn't wide, but it's not narrow either. I would say it's accurate enough 
to not be distracting in any way. But the imaging and instrument separation is very good. And they also have good density and weight as well, which makes them sound just a little more real in my opinion. So my two main takeaways with the FT3s are these. So takeaway number one would be that the overall tuning is good with both pad choices, but is best with the suede pads, in my opinion, because of that extra bass presence. However, if you do prefer a little more of a linear or neutral presentation, you can have that just by switching to the protein leather pads. Takeaway number two is, despite what some have said, in my opinion, the FT3s do benefit slightly from giving them a little more power. The benefits being increased bass, dynamics, and increased clarity in general, but that's just my opinion. But the main question is this, would I recommend the FIO FT3s? And the answer is yes, because while they're not perfect, I still feel the overall performance is quite good for its $319 price tag. It's not the best headphone you can get at this price, but again, it's very good. I still don't think it's going to perform at the levels of say the Hi-Fi Mance and Dara, or the HD 600s or even the HD 560 S's. But again, it is still good for its price. Not to mention the nice design, general good build quality and the very nice accessories they include with the package. So that concludes my review of the FIO FT3s. If you're new to the Gazadio channel and you like our videos, please take a minute and hit that subscribe button. And if you want to go a step further with your support, we also have a Patreon. I'll make sure and leave a link in the description. Thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch this video. Please like this video, please share this video. I hope you have an awesome day.